Hey everybody, I'm Jason Wright, and I wanna to talk to you today about our new threat-centric security model that is before, during, and after the attack. And to be very clear, this is not a product, but this is a model and a way to frame discussions with your customers that really illustrates the value and the beauty of what the Cisco security portfolio is able to offer as a complete solution. So let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that have led us to this path and where we need to approach security in this way. First of all, networks are changing all the time. And you know this, right? Internet of things, new devices, mobile devices, cloud models, all of this stuff makes it very difficult to have a static network. And even the network itself is constantly under a state of change. And so in, the, in addition, the threats are changing as well. Okay, it's not just script kiddies and, and little hackers. These people are well organized, they're educated, and they're making a business out of stealing this information off of networks. And so they're financially motivated. And so they're always evolving the way they attack networks. And finally, because of these first two, it leads to a real level of complexity within security solutions because you get different products from different vendors looking at different things. And so we need to be able to have a much better solution. And that's what Cisco is able to offer with the threat-centric security model. And we talk about this as being before, during, and after the attack, we're able to offer protection. Well, what does before mean? So before is like setting your baseline. It's your perimeter, it's the walls around the castle, and the drawbridge that you can allow and disallow traffic to come in, right? So know what's on the network, identity and access control, firewalls, the initial perimeter line of defense, right? And this is this kind of security technology has, has been around for quite a while. But we are in the business of networking, right? We are communicating out there. So what is going through still needs to be inspected at a deeper level. And that's where the during phase technologies come in. And they're inspecting at a single point in time. And they're looking at traffic as it comes across the wire and saying, is it good or is it bad? Right? And as long as we're right, then there's really no problem here. And we wouldn't need anything else. But as you probably imagine, no security technology is 100% effective. Even Cisco will miss things from time to time. And even if it's not a miss, files change. They, they look benign at first and then they start acting bad later. So we have to have a reason and a way to address threats that do get through these first two models. And that's where the after phase comes in. And this is a very unique section of the model that most vendors don't ever talk about or have the ability to, to provide solutions around. But for attacks that are successful, we keep watching and we remember the decisions that we made at that point in time model, and we keep analyzing that data and behaviors. And if things change, we can go back and change our mind about files. We can pull them out of memory and put them into quarantine and start to stop the threat. We can change the access policies of the users themselves if they're hacked and owned. We can actually even change the policies of the during phase technologies to start blocking things from now on. So these are the things that we're able to do that no other security technology can do because we're sharing information and communicating back and forth across all of these products that you see here. Now, in this series of videos, you're gonna learn a lot more about each of these technologies and product families. So don't worry about memorizing all this. You'll, you'll be able to know all that by the end. But again, before the perimeter, the during, what does come in needs deeper inspection, and the after, what gets through those layers of defense, we remember, we can scope it, we know where it is, we can stop it, we can change our policy during the during phase, and we can change our access rights for problem machines during the before phase as well. And all of this is supported by our security services as well. So a complete solution that is looking at things from a much broader perspective is what we're able to offer. And when you talk about changing business models, well, we're at all of these different models. We're not just a mobile device or we're not just a wireless technology. We're looking at all the different types of networks, all the different devices and users and the complete threat landscape, even as it evolves, we have fail safes built in to be able to change our mind and fix mistakes with the after phase. Even if attacks get through, we can go back and do something about it and nobody else can do that. It's very unique to what we bring to the table. And then finally, because we're offering all of these solutions from Cisco, it's a much more simple design. It's, it reduces the complexity and the fragmentation that attackers will use to get through. 
And we'll talk more about that in a separate video. So ask your customers, how, do, how many vendors do you have in your security architecture? And you'll hear very high numbers, and we'll talk about that. Um, oh, how many of these technologies are communicating back and forth and sharing information? The answer is going to be very few, if any, because they're different vendors. And then finally, what do your security technologies do when they make a mistake and miss an attack? You'll probably get a few blank stares because most technologies don't do anything, but we do something about it. And that's the beauty of our entire solution and the perspective that we bring as Cisco Security Technologies. So enjoy the rest of the videos. And if you want to learn more about the before, during, and after model and how to have this conversation, go to cisco.com slash go slash security. Thanks for tuning in.